time for a couple of questions. Thank you, Jeremy. That was great. It, it brings to life um, statistics and things. If people want to ask, we have time for a couple of questions. If you'd come to the mic and identify yourself, that'd be great. Herb Parlis, New York Presbyterian. Thank you for coming. I, I think it's really terrific of you to do this for all of us. Could you say a few words about if you could design the perfect system to respond to your needs, what would some of the main points be? Well, I think one of the main points is that um, health insurance is important to, to help cover my care, but it's really my long-term care needs. It's make sure I have a caregiver. And it's also having less bureaucracy in terms of, I want to be, a, I, I like the fact that I could hire and schedule my caregiver. I do not like the fact that I have to try to um, justify so many hours each day. I do not like the fact that um, a lot of the long-term care needs, I am a dual eligible, so I have to make sure my income meets a certain limit or under a certain limit. You know, this, um, this really kind of keeps me in uh, essentially almost a near poverty, you know, poverty trap. And I think there, there should be a, almost a liberalization in the program, you know, where there's a chance you might encounter fraud, but it really should be very patient-centered and we should also kind of keep the um, patient with um, the power and the responsibility if they're willing to accept it. Can I just ask one addendum? Um, the issue of the caretaker strikes me as a particularly potent issue. Uh, could you comment on the ability to keep the, the caregiver motivated and also the fact over the stretch of a year time off, weekends, how do you think we could best address that? that, that that's a great question. I think I might have uh, went through that, um, accidentally skipped that slide. You know, the, the caregiver population, they tend to be relatively um, low educated. They tend to be minimally compensated. There is a large labor pool. If you put an ad for a caregiver, you'll get lots of responses. However, there is no real barrier to entry to employment, so you find it to be very transitory. It, it's very difficult to, um, A, motivate a caregiver. I think you have to really see what type of person they are. And you also have to, and this is something I, I try to stress in my presentation, maintain a high level of professionalism. Because once that starts devolving, and then numerous other problems could really creep in. But um, finding the right caregivers and, um, you know, making sure they fit my needs and they are also um, finding enjoyment in their job has been an ongoing struggle. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for one more question. Hi, Alexa Page from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, and I think we uh, all are very impressed with your ability not letting your accident uh, define you, and particularly as an orthopedic surgeon, I appreciate that. Um, in the early part during your, um, your illness and, and when things were happening, um, you talked about uh, a lot of different opinions you got about the pressure ulcer, something we see a lot. Um, there are clinical practice guidelines that can tell us what those best practices are, yet um, particularly, I think, among specialists, they're often not really followed. Um, as a patient, um, one of the excuses used by physicians is they don't want to practice cookbook, me cookbook medicine. What's your feeling about that in t as a patient? Well, I, I, I like the idea of actually cookbook medicine. I would love it if someone just told me, this is exactly what you'll do, and you should expect to be, you know, positive results relatively soon. My experience has been it's, it's been a bit lacking in details. They, they might say you need pressure relief, or they might say you need to keep the wound covered or not. I really think we need to kind of push, you know, push the level of medicine. And I know every patient and every situation is unique, but really we want to, I think, empower the patients with more, I, I'd almost say more detail about what, what's best to do. And I think this really taps into that theme of um, evidence-based medicine and best practices and really getting that to be shared amongst the providers 
and ideally amongst the patients. Great. Let's everyone thank Jeremy again for sharing his story.